After the time stepping loop, to generate output from our code, we will need to write data to a file, which we can then later load into MATLAB and plot or analyze. Let's consider an example. In this example, we'll create a file called ez.dat. And we'll assign that file a unique number, and that will be equal to 20. So in the Fortran code, we're going to open the file. We need to give it a unit number. So the number for this file will be, say, 20. And the file name is going to be equal to ez.dat. We can then write all the easy components of our grid with one number per line in that file using a do loop. So do i equal 1 to i max. So this is so we can recreate the same output that we had from the MATLAB code. So go across the grid and write to file 20. We're just going to use auto formatting. And we're going to write easy all the easy values, one number per line, and then I'm going to end this do loop. So when we're done writing all these numbers to that file, we can close it by putting close 20. And that's it. So once you close the file, you can reuse the number 20 again for a different file. But while each file is open, it needs to have its own unique file number. Otherwise, you'll have data going to the wrong files. Then later in MATLAB, after you transfer this output file to your home computer, you can load it. You can say load ez.dat. And all that data is going to be in a variable called ez. And then you can plot ez, similar to how we've plotted it earlier in the semester. Lastly, at the very end of your code, we need to finish the program. To do this, we should add stop on one line, and then on the very last line, have end program. And then you need to have the same name that you used at the very beginning of the code, which I had put as 1D FDTD code. This is the last change that you need to make to the code to convert it from a MATLAB code to a Fortran code. So when you're done making all of these changes, you can continue on to the next video segment.